Last week we made a video all about the big health changes or health routines, I would say, in over the yeah. past three, four, three, four, four five years. It got a ton of good feedback. I mean, I, I look, I, I will talk about health on this channel a lot if people want to hear about that. It's what uh, we talk about a lot. Yeah, <laughs> in our daily lives. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. But specifically what we're gonna talk about is what we eat on a daily basis. Because I feel like it's a little confusing. I, I think that's one of the biggest areas of questions that I get on Instagram. We don't follow a diet plan. Been I, there, done that. Yeah, lots of, lots of different times. I've done a lot more of these diets than you. I've done vegan diet. I've done almost carnivore, not really, but all, kind of almost. I've done paleo. I've done uh, whole 30. the whole 30, all of the, I forgot about that. All the popular things that. that everybody has heard of. I've done them all. And you know what? I'm throwing them all out the window. I think there's good things in most of them and so you don't want to just like throw them out completely because then you just end up causing other problems. Yeah. So we've kind of learned to take a different approach. Instead of making rules of like lists of things we can and can't eat, we decided to first learn about how our body works and then just apply what we eat to that rather than just following rules and we don't really know why, which I feel Because like of a documentary that you watched one time, yeah. and so it, it's it's inspired you to eat a certain way. But if you have to put a name on it, because I guess that's what everybody wants. Want. Uh, I want it. Uh, it would be something like intuitive eating slash protein focused. Okay. Diet, whole foods, whole food. mostly. <laughs> so we're gonna coin that term, intuitive eating diet. I think that's I want donuts, I eat donuts. No, I want no, pizza. No, no, no. I'm joking. That's not, that's not the intuitive eating. If you start tomorrow, if you are not, if you don't have a healthy diet, you don't you're have a You're Captain Crunch life, eater, Pop yeah, Tart. You're, and you're like, I'm going to start intuitively eating. Your body does not know what it wants. Yeah, your body's not pretty much needs. screwed. So it's, it's telling you the things that it doesn't need because you've trained it to be eating the things that it doesn't need. So it, it's trying to desperately get that to get more energy because your blood sugar is going absolutely nuts your constantly. Your body is basically like a sleep deprived child really yeah. fighting sleep. And you know how they're like crying for like literally yeah, anything no but sleep? That's what your body will be doing. Right. But if you first learn how your body works and you start working with your body, you can learn. You can retrain your body to, in your brain, to then be able to start intuitively eating. It's not like, I crave donuts, so I'm gonna eat donuts. You it's can not, also it's not like kind that. of learn what cravings mean too. So if we start craving sugar, we know like what's happening behind those or what are some options that could be happening behind those sugar cravings. You can just kind of start to anticipate like I ate this so tomorrow I'm going to feel like this and this is what my body is saying that it needs but does it, you know, you have to kind of weigh that like okay well I ate this yesterday so I know how that influences me now. Whereas if you're just eating perfectly, you like you really crave what you need. Yes. It, more than you are just craving random things that you don't actually need. So it's basically sounds really, really complicated if you're just starting because so many people come to me and they're like, just tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And it's a process to get where we are now. Yeah. And we're probably still learning too. Like, I don't think we probably have reached perfection. <laughs> no. Although I'm feeling no, pretty good have. about how we, we how we how we are now. So we'll talk about some of the steps we took to get, get here. Yeah, to get here. But speaking of our bodies being like a sleep deprived child, we wanna say thank you so much to our sponsor Helix because sleep is critical for your health. Helix has supported us for over three years now and when you support them, you're not only just supporting us too, but you're also supporting your health. Here's why. Your mattress at home probably has fiberglass inside of it, which is a terrible thing. If you don't know, fiberglass in your mattress is a pretty big health hazard. There's been some people sued over this recently and a lot of health concerns and stuff. So it's a, it's a pretty big deal. This information is just kind of starting to come out now, but Helix has been ahead of the curb and their manufacturing facility is completely 100% free of all fiberglass. So we sleep easy knowing that we're not sleeping on a bed of fiberglass. So how many times can I say fiberglass? <laughs> Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your unique needs. While also being very conscious of the materials that go into the mattresses. 
But how do they customize the mattress for you? Well, Sarah, with a lot of options for mattresses on their site, how they fit you with the perfect one for you is really fun, unique, and it does not take long at all. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. So they developed a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Sarah and I could not agree on which mattress we wanted to get because we're both, you know, different kinds of sleepers. I am unfortunately a stomach sleeper, while Sarah is a side sleeper. We like slightly different firmnesses. So we took the sleep quiz together as a couple and we were matched with the Helix Sunset Lux mattress and it has been amazing. I want you to experience that first night of Helix sleep like we did. Take their sleep quiz by clicking the link in the description below. And the best part about all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door and in the US it's even free delivery. It just comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set it up yourself. If it makes you nervous to buy something online that you haven't tried yet, there's no need to worry because Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so that's more than three months to make sure that you love it. Plus they have a 10 year warranty. And they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans, so the perfect night's sleep is literally available for everyone. We love our Helix mattress, and we think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. You can click the link down below, or go to helixsleep.com slash Jordan Taylor for 20% off your mattress, plus two free dream pillows. So the first thing that I usually recommend when someone is wanting to move towards eating- Intuitive eating. Healthier, or, you know, yeah. just like eating yeah. healthier, is to focus on protein. Yes. This is really huge because you're going to feel a difference within probably the first week. Most yeah. people that I like coach through this, it's within the first week they're like, wow, I had no idea yeah. I could feel this good. And this is really going to help with cutting back on those cravings that you're going to have mm -hmm. as you change your diet. It really helps to stabilize your blood sugar too because protein takes a little while to break down and it's it really doesn't have an incredible glucose spike like at all whereas carbs do if you cut out carbs completely when you have carbs again it just like, spikes your blood sugar like insane because your body's not used to that so there is a healthy balance between like you don't just cut stuff out completely like all and the I stuff. think it is okay to do for like two weeks to yeah. kind of help your body reset. So it's okay to be a little bit more strict in the beginning as you're making the changes if you want like a quick start. But yeah. Honestly, I usually say start with just one thing at a time so that you don't feel like you have a start date to your diet. Yeah. You kind of want to avoid that because then you don't feel, you're not going to, it's going to feel like a thing you're doing rather than a gradual mm -hmm. lifestyle change. And so it's not going to be sustainable. It's, it's not a diet. You're not, like whenever I eat, I don't think this is my diet. I just, think this is how I eat. There's no restrictions like I eat whatever, I mean, I have ice cream, I have your homemade cookies that you make. Sometimes it's nice to have a cookie. But it's okay. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna ruin anything. A and healthy we'll, body should be able to handle it. Right. But more specifically, step one is usually start focusing on protein for breakfast. Because really, like, that is the thing. There's so many people that I talk to and they are struggling with brain fog and fatigue throughout the day and mm -hmm. it's not feeling great. And as soon as they switch their breakfast to something that is lower in carbs and more heavy on protein, it changes everything. Yeah. So if you can start with just that one change first, it's gonna kind of propel you in the right direction. It's crazy how just that one thing alone, just do that, just have eggs in the morning, or some kind of sausage, some kind of sausage some kind of or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that will like, you'll be amazed with how long you can go without eating after that. Because every time you eat a snack, it, it spikes your blood sugar or it gives you a re your body a response. It has to kind of put the brakes on what it's doing like your brain and it has to start focusing on the digestion process again. So you kind of want to have meals meal here, meal here, meal here. And that helps to mitigate that constant digestive like response because that takes a lot of energy yeah, out of which you. Which leads me to step two is try to cut out so many snacks. Yeah. So usually I start with high protein breakfast and then kind of getting used to eating more protein throughout the day. And there's like a certain formula I can, I follow. Yeah. But typically like if you're getting less than 70 grams, of protein. Yeah, that's like not a good thing. That's not, it's probably not, not good. And if you really keep track of how many grams of protein that you eat, you will be shocked with how little protein little, that yeah. you eat. It, you need way, way more than you think. And we don't count our protein every day. That's just kind of something we've learned. Like every once in a while, I'll kind of see how I'm doing and I'll count up my yeah. protein for the day to see like, am I kind of hitting that? Um, but like 
counting is so annoying. So well, it's not you natural. Like, where you don't need to be keeping track of everything. I don't like counting because I don't think that that's normal. Like the people two hundred years ago, they didn't count their calories. <laughs> they, they didn't, didn't have count nutrition facts. How many? Yeah, I mean. You, you you killed an animal, you ate the animal until it was gone. Like, that was the counting. How many days do I have this for? I don't think it's stupid. I think that it is uh, useful, but I don't think people should be obsessed with it. Should it should be a limited tool. Yeah, it's a tool that we can use now, but don't like make your whole life about how many exactly how many grams yeah. and your breakfast a good like indicator on if you're eating a good breakfast for you is if you can make it at least four hours without being hungry then you're probably pretty good doing pretty good with your breakfast yeah if you are hungry within two hours two to three hours then you probably need to make some changes yeah so let's talk about like a common breakfast is cereal or a common breakfast for healthy people is oatmeal mm -hmm. I I used to eat oatmeal with, you know, dates on top of it and had no honey idea. <laughs> and stuff. And I was, I mean, just a huge bowl, you know, and I am starving an hour later. It was incredible. And this was very consistent. Now, when I have a protein, because, you know, oatmeal is very high in carbs. Well, when I have a heavy protein meal. Especially when you put dates in exactly, it. Exactly. <laughs> I can go five I mean, like, I, honestly, yeah. this is me personally. I could go just eating two meals a day. Yes. Sarah can't do that. I don't even know if I should do that. But all I know is when I have, like, a... When I'm working outside all day, if I have a nice protein-based meal for breakfast, I can go a very long time without eating. And it's nice because I don't have to stop to eat, you know? I can just do my other stuff. I'm not hungry. I'm focusing. I feel great. Uh, yeah, so cutting out those snacks is is... You know, really important. Which goes against, I think, some popular like eating advice. A mm. lot of people out there still say, which is this is like based on old research, so was a thing, really shouldn't be a thing anymore. But they'll say like to keep your blood sugar stable, you should eat every two constantly. to three hours. But here's the thing, your eating constantly does not stabilize your blood sugar, it stabilizes it high. And that's not what you want. You want yeah. stable blood sugar even when you're not eating and that shows metabolic health. And so yeah. if you have been told or if you are practicing eating every two hours for stable blood sugar, you're actually causing damage rather than helping the problem. I'm suspicious of stuff when people are like, hey, you need to eat all the time. It's like, well, who, who is funding this research? Is it the food industry who's telling me I need to snack all the time? Like who, so you really need to look into who is funding research, who is trying to pull the strings and manipulate stuff. I'm not saying that that's what that is, but I always yeah. just, that's the in the back of my mind. I'm like, can I trust this? I also always think what was possible like 300 years ago or before? Like mm -hmm. what was possible in the way that people used to eat and survive and the reality was that snacking every two hours was not a plausible yeah. thing to do and so how were people so healthy because eating snacks or not eating snacks it's not necessarily going to kill you it's not like a life or death thing we're talking about feeling good having energy not having brain fog so those types of things are going to be helped by nourishing your body in meals rather than snacking i also find that snacking can lead to not only overeating but also under eating because sometimes mm -hmm. you don't really realize how much or how little you're eating. It's hard to quantify. Little things throughout the day. And so it can just kind of get you into a mess. You're gonna have mood swings. Mm -hmm. So personally, I eat like 100 grams of protein a day. That's kind of what I shoot for. And again, I'm not- 100 to 120 is what you should. I'm not counting, but I generally know how much protein is in what. And you keep, you like have more mental math I think I think about that. it more yeah, than you do. Yeah, you do. I just eat, and I eat enough protein, and then when I feel like, okay, I should probably have more, I'll have more. And if I feel fine, I, I'm i done. Is it off sometimes? 90 grams? Sure it is. Okay. Is fine. I don't do the same thing every single day. Some days I'm doing a lot more exerting stuff, and your body kind of needs different things based on the physical activity that you're doing for that for that day. Yeah, so those are basically the two first steps that are going to be easy to make, fairly easy, and I and 
give yourself time to figure it out as you go. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that I see a lot of people get like hung up on, and I feel like I probably did in the beginning too, is like, well, what if you are a person who's always on the go? Like, yeah. how can I, most like snack foods or like quick lunches or things, like you do need those things sometimes. Um, like how do I choose a high protein one when most of them are like snack bars or granola bars or things mm -hmm. that are really not gonna be helpful? And what do you do instead? To give yourself time to like figure it out. What kind of foods that are high in protein do you enjoy? Because it might not be the same ones that I well, do. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's limited options when it comes to protein based snacks you so can, you can get creative no i know but there's like you can have uh like a meat kind of stick like a chomp we stick really is like, like beef jerky, type, beef jerky things. type things you can also have like a hard boiled egg that's something else that you can you know Eggs potentially take with you or yeah. nuts or um we like apple with with a nut butter that's a yeah. good um, option because apples on their own will spike your blood sugar, but if you pair it with a fat and protein, like like a nut butter, mm -hmm. then that's much better. It so does there work. are so, lots. Yeah. There's lots of options out there. Yeah. So that's why I say like t give yourself time to figure it out and kind of see what you like, and so that you don't have to like go out and buy just a ton of like protein snacks all at once. Yeah. So you don't have to cut out snacks completely. Like just slowly make that transition between eating a lot of snacks to eating less snacks and having a full meal and, and it'll just slowly evolve over time. And then step three, and this might actually happen naturally as you're doing the first two steps, yeah. but focus on crowding out rather than cutting out. And so this just means you're going to do exactly what you've been doing, focusing on protein, trying to snack less, eat more like full protein meals. focused nourishing meals. Um, and that is going to then crowd out room in your day and your stomach and your life for foods that are less good for you. So this would be like buying less processed foods. It's amazing how little you want to have chips when you've when you've committed to, okay, I'm gonna eat chips at the end of my meal, you know? Uh, you've eaten a lot before then and now it's like, okay, even if you have some chips, you're, you're not gonna just sit there with a bag of chips and just eat and eat and eat. That's also, kind of a big by thing. By this time, you're going to realize how much better you can feel eating the foods that you should be eating. So it's motivating. So that it's, it's motivating to not eat those things yeah. that are not going to be bad at you, bad for you. So you're not going to feel deprived. You start to inspire yourself. You start to realize how you can feel instead of being a slave to food all the time. Cause I remember how that was, you know, driving in the car and thinking it was normal that I started to like get shaky and couldn't focus. It was like, dude, I feel like I'm going to pass out cause I'm so hungry. Now with this way of eating and just to kind of conclude the video, you're not a slave to food. You kind of use food to propel yourself and, and give yourself nutrients so that you can live your life. It, it's a different kind of relationship. And before you know it, you'll be reading labels and like avoiding bad ingredients, but that's mm -hmm. not gonna happen overnight. So if we haven't made it clear, it yeah. is a slow process, but if you start with just like one little thing at a time, mm -hmm. you're slowly going to evolve the way that you eat and you might not even really notice that it's happening. Yeah, it's a, it's a great journey to go on. It does take some time, but it's fun because you start to learn a bunch of new techniques with food and different things to eat and what to eat with what. And it just, you know, is that kind of fun? It's kind of fun when you can kind of be able to control how you feel based on what order of food that you eat and it's things. It's definitely less overwhelming when you don't try to just change your diet, like go on a diet yeah. <laughs> or try to find that list. And I think some people think that it's easier to have the rules, to have the list of the things I can and yeah. can't eat, but it's almost never sustainable and it's almost never fun either. Yeah, like I would say probably not never fun. fun. Not, it, it seems fun at first, yeah. but then it becomes less and less fun and then you just completely quit and just go back to your old ways. This is the only diet that I have done that I just feel like, oh, okay, this is just, this is life. This isn't like, I'm not, I'm not even trying. This is just what it is. And I can have whatever I want within moderation. And But you even realize that what you want is different. Like, or that's yes. definitely for me. I feel like I struggled with this a lot more, but yeah. what I used to want, like I used to walk by things in the store and be like, that's bad for me, but I really want it. Mm -hmm. Now I walk by it and I'll be like, oh, remember when I used to like this? Yeah, exactly. And so it's just a completely different mindset 
mindset where I just don't feel deprived and I never thought that yeah. I that that would happen. So if you want to talk to us further, comment down below or you can message us on Instagram where we really love to talk about health and things like that. This, this is kind of what our Instagrams are both focused around. So if this interests you at all, follow us here and uh, we would love to talk to you. We love talking to people in direct messages over there on Instagram. So we will talk to you guys later. Bye.